Now I'm going to look into the background a bit more and perhaps have something else here. Just a little bit of dark there, taking it out. And blending away. And that will allow these leaves to overlap on that point. So I'm going to crisscross along now with the rest of the leaves this side. And thinking about any lighter ones that are going to come within there. There could be a little light flower there. Reduce the tone a little. And I might, just to balance it, take a few more shapes out here. Some sort of fern, perhaps. And it'd be nice to have a dark here so that we have a flat wash shadow. So this is just the grazing stroke across here so that that is going behind. And those can trail down a bit to add a bit of interest there. Now that could be a large leaf there. Going up, perhaps another one there. I tend to work very much in monochrome for the different areas when I start out. So all this will be roughly the same green, just while the shapes are, are put in place. And the colour will be added later. And I'll do some glazing with perhaps a lemon yellow over the light side, finally, just to bring out the sun in that area. But now I'm putting on very quick shapes up to and away because I'm putting in the negatives. The negatives are these dark shadow recess shapes and I can let the positives, like an area like this where I'm going up to and away, two little negatives and the positive is some sort of stem or support within it. But take your time when you're doing this sort of thing so that your eye has an idea about how the, the actual composition is going to be arranged because I think I'd like something light coming out there now. And to do that I'll need to go back to the stone colour and possibly add some a leaf here, quite a large one, another one there. And these leaves could be pulled down a bit so something else there and something coming out from here. I'm actually thinking back to front now, thinking what's behind in order to bring out what I see in front. And now I can go out into the stonework again by gently following some of the pattern in the paper, looking at the texture of the paper to help that stonework. and working down, blending out. If I blend out to quite a light area there, I could do some more counter change when it's dry by putting a dark side to some other plant here that could be lower down and then let the sun catch the other side again. So I may wish to do that, and because of that I'm not going to put too much tone there at the moment. And going back to the colour of the pot, I'm just bringing in a few 
little darks underneath so that we've got some cast shadow over the pot from the leaves. And for this it's crisscross and then I can put in the rim of the pot just round there and that'll help me place that and get the feel for it. And a little bit of shadow underneath again to make sure that I've got the shape of the pot curved at the base. And of course any leaves here will also start putting cast shadows down. And then dry the brush off and just come away very gently so that I can sit back and see whether I like the positioning of it. So it's now beginning to build up and I've got to have regard all the time to these silhouette shapes against the light. The dark shadow recess here with just a simple shadow shape behind which will bring out this part of the pot. I know that I'm going to put a bit of a shadow along this pot later with perhaps some reflected light here so I'll come within it to bring that shadow down. I'll reinforce this area at the base so that it's anchored nicely and then I'll be going into all these darks so that I have a shadow recess area that has a negative shape to make those lights stand out. So I'm just going to finish off by increasing some of the depth on this undercoat so that I'm aware of what sort of shapes I'm arriving at and they are just putting these shapes in and sitting back to see that I like the composition. Another little dark there and making sure I know where the flower heads are going to come. There's going to be one there and there are two up there and over there. Later on when I build up these darks you will notice that I don't fill in completely some of the recess shapes. I work within them and that's the way we can actually see the variety of tones that are there to build it up. But it's a very gradual build up and hoping that the recesses are going to take us in and give this three-dimensional feel and for that we do need to have a good variety of tone with the darkest ones right in there. I'll just crisscross down here a little bit to decide where these are going to come. A leaf there. And I might at this stage actually introduce a little bit similar to that over here so that I could work along if I wanted another plant. So a few more crisscross shapes splaying out for the next plant. a different shape pot perhaps. As I'm doing this I'm thinking how nice if we just saw a little bit of that pot there and we've got some something else trailing from another pot along here with something in it. And that could take us along nicely. So I will actually introduce a little bit of green just along the base here. When some of these pot plants are kept in greenhouses or on patios they do spread and give us some very interesting shapes and certainly some ivies would be all over the place moving around but I think these trailing plants are quite nice. So there could be something coming in from over this side and for that I would do my pull down strokes and also look for areas where I can have those shadow recess shapes. And this is really preparing everything for the next coat which will be the gradual building up of the tonal values. This is allowing me to have a lovely light side there and some of these greens going against some of the others could have dark recesses that are really going to bring them forward. And that ties it up quite nicely. So because I know now where that's going to be I can travel across a little bit with the wall. So a few more strokes across just to establish where that's going to be. That could be a shadow shape and then dry the brush off 
and get some texture. I'm looking for lost lines, I'm looking for areas that I can leave where the edge isn't too obvious so that we get a nice subtle feel to that and a realistic approach. You can touch it before it's dry and watch it blend and see if you can get some interesting shapes coming without even having to think about them. The paper's doing it for you and the way you're applying your pigment to it. So it's very subtle. Very gently disturbing it enough to get an interest. And if it's vignetted out, it doesn't have to be obvious where we've stopped. We can just let it disappear. I think I need a little bit of dark in there. I put the dark on with a crisscross movement as well in case I want any very slender trailing areas from that come in and then I can go across and fill in the darks. Just so that I know which areas I'm covering with the tone for the moment. Just a few more of these leaves coming forward almost in a v-shape, an upside down v-shape be quite nice with these going off so that the eye could go on if we wanted to extend it. Some pictures look nice when they're just elongated and especially with a row of pot plants that could make a very attractive picture so I'm just going to come in as if those could go off again at a tangent. I think everything's now coming along and getting it in place ready for the next stage. So as I sit back and look at it, I just perhaps would like a little bit of a suggestion of blue just to help the color scheme. So I'm putting a tiny bit of ultramarine. Just above some of these. and then blend it away. Just to bring something into that corner with a little bit of colour. And I think that's the undercoat in place now. So that's the undercoat completed the underpainting. In the next program I'm going to show you how I gently build the overlays and how I add the eventual glazing to bring out the sun on the lightest sides. now available on DVD. Try these techniques yourself at home whenever you wish. The extended version of today's workshop is now available to order on DVD from the Painting and Drawing channel. For further information and to order your copy, go to www.paintingdrawingchannel.com.